Today I'm going to show you how I created this Yeezy Shades 3D animation in Blender, which Connie actually ended up seeing. To create animations or visualizers like these, I use these five softwares. I'll go into more detail about each one later in the video. The first step is using FaceGen. FaceGen is a great software that allows you to create realistic faces with textures without doing any modeling yourself. This software is super simple to use. You just upload a front photo and a side photo of the person you want to create, and it will create a face morph and textures for you. So on Google, I first searched for high quality photos of Kanye taken from the front and side view, and I saved them into my project folder. Then in FaceGen, I upload the photos. Once the photos are uploaded, it then prompts me to mark different points on both photos, which FaceGen then uses as guidelines for creating the morph and textures. Once all the marking is complete, I make sure the Use Details for Profile Photos option is checked. Then I finally click on the Create from Photos button and let FaceGen do its magic. After a little waiting, FaceGen creates my morph, and in this case it actually turned out pretty good. Sometimes there will be weird artifacts and if that happens, the best thing to do is just start again or try with different photos. Then in the Export menu, I give my morph and textures a parameter name. This is the name of what it will be referred to in DAS. And I also make sure the Genesis 8 model is selected. Then I click export and it will save my morph and textures in my DAS directory. It's really important to know where the texture maps are saved because I'll need to go into this directory later when adding in the textures. Now in DAS Studio, I first load in a Genesis 8 model into my scene. This is the same model I exported my morph and textures for. Then it's time to add my face morph from FaceGen. This is in the shaping tab. I look for the parameter name I saved my face morph as. Then by simply adjusting the slider, I can change the face to a Kanye face. Now obviously something still seems a little off and that's because we still haven't added the textures yet. So in the surfaces tab, I add in the Kanye textures that were generated by FaceGen. I add in the corresponding texture maps for each surface by changing the base color parameter and then locating to the directory where the textures were saved. For a few of the surfaces, Surfaces such as the face, ears, and lips, the same texture map is used. The only ones I keep the default texture maps are for the teeth and mouth since FaceGen doesn't generate a texture map for those. For the eye surfaces, I use a different texture map than the one generated by FaceGen, and this is because the one generated by FaceGen is never very good. I also make a few more adjustments to the body shape in the shaping tab to add that extra level of detail. Now our Kanye is starting to look a lot more like Kanye. Then I save the scene. It's finally time to export our character into Blender, except it's not as straightforward as you would think. So there are two main approaches here. One, we can use the Dash to Blender bridge that allows us to easily take our model to Blender, but the textures don't really look that good. Or we do it using the Diffeomorphic plugin. This approach has a few extra steps to set up, but it results in textures that look a lot more realistic. And it's the approach that I always take. This plugin is totally free and there's an awesome tutorial by Lucid Man Studio that shows you how to quickly set it up. I'll link that in the description below. Using the Diffeomorphic plugin, I then export the model and make sure to give it the same name I used to save the file. Now jumping into Blender, I first import the model using the DAS Importer add-on, which is part of the Diffeomorphic plugin. Now I use another plugin called RigGNS. This plugin is super useful for adding animations to your custom characters from DAS. We can use it to directly add Mixamo animations into Blender, which we will do later in this video. This plugin has saved me a lot of time and I really enjoy the workflow with it. So to be able to add animations through RigGNS, I first need to convert my DAS rig to a meta rig. This is simply done by going through the steps in the rig figure dropdown. Once the meta rig is added, I check to make sure everything is rigged properly. Now the next step is to add hair. The simplest way I've found to do this is by selecting half the faces for the scalp and then duplicating it. Once they're duplicated, then I make them into a separate object. Then with the scalp object selected, I add a mirror modifier and select my base model as a mirror object. Next, I add a shrink wrap modifier and choose my base model as a target. This wraps my scalp mesh to the model so it always sticks to it. Then I start moving the vertices to create a realistic hairline. I turn on proportional editing, which allows me to move multiple vertices at once. This really helps speed up the process. I also make sure to have images I can reference when creating the hairline, because it can be a little tricky. Once that is done and I'm happy with how it looks, I add a new material for the hair and then apply the mirror modifier. Now I can start adding the hair. So in the particle tab, I add in a new particle system and select hair. Now the rest of the process depends on how I want the hair to look. This part involves a lot of experimenting. I always use a reference image to get the correct style, density, and length of the hair. Here were the final values I used for Kanye's hair. In the materials tab, I also change the color to principal hair BSDF because it makes the hair look a lot more realistic. For the facial hair, I use a similar process as the hair except I only select a few faces that I duplicate and separate into a different object. Once again, I add the mirror modifier and the shrink wrap modifier as I did for the hair. I also add a new material so I can see the faces better. Then in edit mode, I start shaping the base for the facial hair. So the reason I do it this way is because it gives me a lot more flexibility with how I want the facial hair to turn out. 
Once I'm done with the modeling, I apply my mirror modifier and then add in a hair particle system. Like the hair on the head, this part involves a lot of experimenting until the results start to look good. Here are the final values I used for the facial hair. I will definitely make a more detailed video on hair in the future. Then it was time to create the easy shades. This part was actually pretty quick since the glasses are simple in a symmetrical shape. I started off with a plane and then added a mirror modifier and a subdivision modifier and then started shaping the plane into the shape of the shades. Once the shades were done, I then parented them to the rig to make sure they would move with the rest of the body. At this point, we now have a rigged Kanye model in a pose that has hair and shades. Now the only thing missing are the clothes and the walk animation. Before I add the animation, I first save this a pose version as an FBX that I will later use to add clothing to my model. This is because a pose and key pose models are a lot easier to work with when adding clothing. Now to add animations, I like to use this amazing software called Mixamo. It has a bunch of free animations you can add to your character. For my project, I searched for a walking animation and then picked one that I liked. I edited the animation to get it to look how I wanted and then I clicked the download button. Now as I mentioned before, the Rig GNS add-on is super useful because it allows us to directly add animations to our model. By clicking on the Mixamo importer, I import the walking animation I had just saved. Now the animation's added into the scene, but it hasn't been binded to our model yet. But before I bind it, I first duplicate the frame so the animation loops for the length I want it to. I then adjust the end frame to match the last frame of the animation. Then I check to make sure the loop runs smoothly. To bind the animation to the Kanye model, I just click the bind button under the animation dropdown, and the animation is now finally binded to our model. The next step is to add clothing. And to do this, I'll be using Marvelous Designer. This software is pretty pricey, costing around $39 a month, but it is amazing with how easy it is to create and animate your own clothing. Now, before jumping into Marvelous Designer, I first export this model with the animation as an Olympic file. Then in Marvelous Designer, I import the Olympic file and make sure the animation runs smoothly. Then I save this file as a pose, and you will see why we do this later in the video. So moving on, I then import my FBX file with the A pose and I start adding in the clothing. To make my life simpler, I import it in a set of pre-existing pants and a hoodie that come free with the software. Then in the 2D pattern window, I made small adjustments to these garments to give it more of a Yeezy feel. Then I open the pose I had saved earlier. Now if I select the pose and joint option, the clothing will automatically move into the animation pose. Now if I import my Olympic animation, I won't have to manually fit the clothing with a new pose. This is why we saved that pose earlier. After that, I took some time to fix the hood so it's underneath the shades, since that's how Kanye usually wore the glasses. So once I'm done adjusting the hood, I head into the drop down in the top right and select animation. Now here, if I just simply click the record button, it will simulate the clothing with the animation. This part typically takes a long time depending on how long the animation is and how fast your computer is. Now the last step in Marvelous is to fix the UVs. So we want to fit the UVs in a one by one square and make sure that there are no pieces overlapping. Then I export the clothing as an Olympic file and make sure that the thick option is selected. Now back in Blender, I import the Olympic file I had just saved and then go into the shader editor. I add a new material and then import in the textures. Now we finally have the clothes with the baked animation. So now it's time to create the rest of the scene. For the background, I decided to go with a minimalist yet futuristic looking tunnel. To do this, I started off with a cube and then added loop cuts to create additional edges. To create windows, I just deleted a few faces. And then I duplicated the object multiple times to create a long tunnel. Once that was done, it was time to add the rotating camera animation. To do this, I first added a circular curve and then in edit mode, moved the 3D cursor to the specific point on the curve. Now when I add the camera, it's added on the 3D cursor. Then I parent the camera to the curve and select the follow path option. The camera now follows the circular curve. Now in the curve setting, I change the resolution to 64 and I change frames to 180 so it makes one full rotation around a model every 180 frames. Now I change the aspect ratio and adjust the camera so it faces our character. So the last thing we want to add is to make it feel like our character is actually moving forwards. To do this, we can simply animate our tunnel to move backwards. So with the tunnel selected, I add a keyframe on the first frame. Then I move to the last frame and move the tunnel on the x-axis by a couple meters and add another keyframe there as well. Now as we go from the first frame to the last frame, it will move our tunnel making it seem like our character is walking forwards. The only issue is that it's currently an ease in and ease out animation, meaning the movement of the tunnel accelerates in the beginning and then decelerates. To change this, I go into the graph editor and with all the keyframes selected, I go into a key option, interpolation mode and select linear. Now the tunnel moves at a constant speed throughout the animation. So with that being out of the way, the last thing to add is lighting. 
I use a simple RGB background and make the light brighter and increase the strength. Then when I'm happy with how everything looks, I render the animation. And that is it for this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. I've attached the project files for this project in the description below. Finally, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.